Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in New Berlin at Veterans Memorial Park, which was dedicated earlier this year after five years of planning and hard work. During this program, we'll get a tour of this park and find out how it was built. And since it's November, the month of Veterans Day, we'll also talk to some of the veterans who helped put this project together about their service. Paul Sweet, of all the memorials to veterans I've seen in central Illinois, this may be the most impressive. Well, thank it's you. Incre thank well, you. Yeah, you, des you deserve a lot of thanks. And it took, I mean, literally years, didn't it? Five years. Five from, years from the time from you sat down, had a cup of coffee, cup of started coffee brainstorming about yeah. it, to the fact that, to where you were able to dedicate it last July. Yes. It yes. is remarkable. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We're standing in front of the obelisk. This is sort of the centerpiece of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I love what it says on it. All gave some, some gave, gave all. all. Terrific. Wonderful sentiment. And atop that is America's bald eagle. How did you choose that? Um, that well, the eagle is is our national symbol, and and you know if you look at an eagle, the eagles are always they're just totally focused, mm -hmm. and and this represents our national uh, security, our national our branches of the service, and you know the the eagle is. Uh, just our national symbol. It's gorgeous. I mean, whoever captured that, it's uh, did a, did a heck of a job. And that was, I have to be honest, that was selected by my wife off the internet, <laughs> and she uh, found that, and that's yeah. what we selected as as to sit on this obelisk. So each one of these, uh, th there's a there's a monument. Let's walk down here. There's an upright for each of the branch of service, and what's very impressive. Not only is the granite very impressive. But here's the Band of Brothers Army. But but the etchings are yes. incredible. Yes. How did that get accomplished? Well, just a, a brief brief history about the, the memorial. When when we were were in the process of getting our 501c3, doing all the organization, we had ideas from each member of the association, of which there were eight members. We put together different ideas, and uh, Jim C. Davenport, computer. Uh, graphics, he mm -hmm. put together uh, kind of a concept and through my, I'll say my background, I kind of drew everything to, to size, to scale, to get everything spaced out and so that it would be a, a nice workable uh, memorial. Mm -hmm. And early on all we ha actually had was just the original, uh, the emblems or, or the um, uh, you know, of each branch. Yeah. Well, then, in the development of wow. each 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 monument, uh, different association members selected things that would yeah. go on there. Let's let's look at the next one too. So that, here, that was Army. This is Navy. The Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. It's a that's a nuclear carrier uh -huh. representing our 16th president oh, of the United gorgeous. States. Just gorgeous. And over here, to Marine the Marines, Corps. and of course the Iwo Jima flag raising. That's always fresh in everybody's mind. Just beautiful etchings. Just beautiful. And the granite, wow. Top rate. This one we've seen. Now, one thing I would like to point out quickly is the American flag. Uh -huh. Many people may not notice that, but 48 star flag. Uh huh. Because during World War II, we had a 48 star flag. Right. In, is, in 1950, Alaska and then Hawaii became uh -huh. uh, our 50th okay. state. So, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to point that yeah. out. Interesting. The red tails from the Air Force. You're Air yes. Force yourself, aren't you? I'm retired Air Force. Retired Air Force. Uh huh. Uh, I was. Yeah. And you know, I, the, the little story I'd like to tell about this. Okay. Um, in 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 working on this upright memorial we were just trying to decide what to put on here. And I thought, what would be more appropriate than the Red Tails? Because in World War II, the Tuskegee Airmen were trained in Tuskegee, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they were, all became pilots, they were sent to North Africa, kind of out of the way. Well, the P-51s that were escorting the bombers into Germany and into France 
they were losing bombers. The, the Germans were taking out bombers and fighter aircraft. Well, when they got to a certain drop to a certain level, they called Tuskegee Airmen to come in and do all of this escorting. And from that point, they never lost another bomber or another P-51. Ah, so okay. that's the reason that they've Very been Very significant. OK, gotcha. The Coast Guard, protect, search, rescue. Very, very. And realistically, the Coast Guard is much more involved than most people really realize. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Merchant Marine at the end. Well, one, a lady on our association, uh, Evelyn Nagel, early on said we must recognize the Merchant Marines. They lost heavy casualties during World War II. Over, well over 200 car uh, cargo ships were sunk and all the crews mm -hmm. were lost. Now, I'd like to point out this SS Jeremiah O'Brien mm -hmm. was commissioned and served in World War II, still serving today. The flags behind, each, each branch of service gets a flag as well as the POW MIA, the United States flag and the flag of Illinois. Mm -hmm. And all of these flag posts and the supports were all donated, donated. by mm -hmm. groups who were interested in making Individuals this work. Individuals or, a, or yeah. a sponsor or, or an organization. And right down in front of these monuments on the ground, you'll see that you have these, uh, these polished pavers and all of these memorialize someone who served from this area. No, not really. Uh, we have individuals in here that live in Michigan. Uh, really? Oh, yes, Florida, uh, California. Uh, they're, they're from all over the United States. Well, that's terrific. And, and the, the, the bad stigma was is that when we started the association, uh, in filling out our paperwork, we put on there that we are the New Berlin Area Veterans Memorial. Mm -hmm. Well, the word area became kind of a bad stigma because individuals would think, Oh, do I have to be a New Berlin? No, it's just, it's all veterans. And so right now to date, we have 380 veterans in here. Wow. We've sold more pavers that are in the process of being etched. And it's any, any individual who served in the military. And we actually have uh, one Civil War soldier in here somewhere. So. This is going to help you keep this effort going, the I, maintenance, and because there will be maintenance, and all these, all th this fundraising here will help you keep it going, won't it? Maintenance, insurance, mm -hmm. uh, uh, our heat, electric bill for maintaining the lighting mm -hmm. and everything. So yeah, there's there's a, a lot going on. I had to ask you because everybody always wants to know what things cost. Of course, I said, what would this have cost you if you had to pay to have all this work done? And you thought it would be $600,000. Well, we had a visitor one day, it was an architect, came and he wanted to see it because he heard about it. And I happened to be here and we chatted. And I asked him, I said, if you were to do the initial planning, design, development, uh, organize the contracts and, and have, let's say, union help come in and do this. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, well, not including the purchase of the ground, this memorial would probably cost about 600000 wow. Now, we had probably two-thirds of it between materials, uh, equipment, uh, people volunteering their time, mm -hmm. and, and just huge sponsorship that have pay, probably paid for about two-thirds of this. That's we, terrific. In our total cost in, in, in buying um, materials, the flagpoles, we probably have somewhere between 150 and 200 thousand yeah. dollars of our own money in, invested in this. Well, congratulations so. on a terrific job. Now, I mentioned earlier what we're going to do with this program is we're going to use this as a springboard to talk to some of the area veterans who helped with this effort, and of course who helped with their service through service. the years. So, so thank you so much, and we'll get to those interviews. Well, thank you, thank, thank you, you, Mark. Appreciate it. You bet. Rose Connolly, 22 years in, in the Air Force. Correct. When you entered as a young woman, was it unusual for somebody to have to want a career, a, a young lady to want a career in the Air Force? I think it was, especially for that time when parents still uh, didn't want to let go of their children. They just wanted to see them marry off. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was true. And, and so you went ahead anyway? Oh, yeah. I... Were you a rebellious kid? <laughs> no, I was making up for lost time, Is actually. That right? <laughs> You know, you, you, you had an interesting career, and one thing I like about it is you ended up being an instructor, uh, or you were, for a significant period of your service, you were an instructor in leadership courses, which is something you thought you'd never do. 
<laughs> well, I was afraid to speak in public, I, but I always felt I had something to say, but that was some holding me back. So I just jumped in over the diving board with something that I really felt true about. And got over your fears? Got over my fears. Okay, and so you would you say that you became a good instructor? Uh, there were better, but there were worse. Mm -hmm. And you got some honors too. I noticed you were you were veteran of the month in Illinois at one point. Well, weren't I'm you? very proud of that, and and my nominator uh, who was proud of me for doing that. Uh, it was during Women's History Month, so. Mm -hmm. Your husband is military. Was military. Was military. Your sons were in the Marines, and they're still serving, aren't they? Well, they're serving uh, as post Marines now, uh, working for the uh, uh, VA centers. Uh, one is here in Springfield and one is in Peoria. Yeah, so they're still involved with the military in a big mm -hmm. way. And so are you. Uh, yes, through veterans organizations yeah. and the best I can. Yeah, a and you're very involved in veterans organizations. And why do, you, why do you stay involved? Well, I think part of it is I want to get the quiet ones involved. I want them to feel proud. And I know some of them are shy, and since I've had that instructor background, I'm, I'm gotten over my shyness. So I feel like I kind of speak for some of the shy ones and I want them to feel proud. I know people who have just wanted to disintegrate back into society and I know individuals when someone finds out about that that they say thank you for your service all of a sudden wow it has meaning mm -hmm. and they wanted to put it to rest but there's something in your DNA you cannot get rid of that being a veteran. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for visiting with us. Oh, you're welcome. That's Colonel Jim Bathurst in the front of his platoon as an active Marine. In fact, he relives his career as a Marine in the book, We'll All Die as Marines. This is a recent book for you too, isn't it, Jim? Yes, just published in December. Mm -hmm. um, why did you write it? Uh, it started out as a, uh, as a, a compilation of Word uh, files about my career that uh, when I'm dead and gone that my grandkids and my kids could read and see what the old man was doing when he missed her first steps <laughs> and their first ball game and what have you. Yeah, and yeah. It, you know, over the years, it just these files kept getting larger and larger and more of them. And yeah. finally, two cronies of mine, two retired Marine buddies of mine, found out about it, and and they talked me into putting it into a book, which. I had no intention of ever doing, but yeah. uh, so um, it's uh, for the last four and a half years. This has been a labor of love. Mm -hmm. It's taken it's taken yeah. me that long because I'm not a writer, but my but my editor yeah. is a writer. Thank it, goodness. It, it, it documents your career from private to colonel. Yes, um, and uh, all that all that time as a marine will all die as marines. Let me ask you this though, having served in that Vietnam era and afterwards, um, do you? Does it affect you on a daily basis, or do you live with it, or what's your, how do you, how's your day, how does it go day to day? Um, you live with it. Um, oftentimes when someone see my Purple Heart license plate on my car, like at a gas station or whatever, and they'll say, uh, uh, Vietnam, and I'll say yes, and they'll say, when were you there? And if I have time to talk to him, because <laughs> uh, it usually drags on to a rather long conversation, I'll say, last night. And he'll look at me and say, last night? And I say, yeah. And actually, again, this morning, as I was having a cup of coffee by myself mm -hmm. down in the kitchen. And then they'll laugh and say, oh, I know what you mean now. Uh, yes, it's on one's mind all the time. Nobody mm -hmm. comes away from from such a tragic thing as war unchanged. Mm -hmm. um, some handle it well, some can't handle it. And, and that's very tragic. Um, I, I, um, I've learned to live with it. Mm -hmm. But is it ever far from my mind? No. Uh, I'll be watching TV and all of a sudden uh, an actor's name will be uh, Olson. And I'll think of Corporal Gary Olson, Echo 2-1, April. 1967, when he was killed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just little things like that will bring back yeah. to you the the yeah. uh, you know the uh, the whole story yeah. of it. And it's um, but you know you does it bother me? No. 
Uh, sometimes when I'm having my single malt scotch and a good cigar in the evening and my wife will walk down with her glass of wine to the basement where I'm sitting and she'll say, what are you thinking about? And I'll say, nothing. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> and she knows that. Yeah. I mean, she, yeah. she knows that. Yeah, it's part of you. Yeah, it's yeah. part of it. It's part of it. Jim, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ray Lloyd, you live in the Berlin area. Yeah, just two miles north of Berlin. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you have an interesting uh, career in the military. It's sort of pseudo-military because you were, uh, you've, you're retired reserves now, but when you went in, you were um, sort of like the, the NSA or the Army's security people. You were, the, you were sort of like military, would I say spies? My father-in-law used to be very proud. He'd go up to somebody who would say, what is your son-in-law doing in the military? And he'd say, he's a spy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not altogether f false to say you were a spy. But I mean, it wasn't that simple. It wasn't like you were a spy. You had a very specific role. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But okay. what I wanted to get to first was the fact that you're very proud of your heritage, your yes. military heritage. It yes. goes way back to Great Britain, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> My father was born and raised in England. Mm -hmm. and. You go to his great-grandfather and his grandfather and his father. They were all military. Mm -hmm. My mother also had ties to the military. Is that right? If you look at my great-grandfather here, he was in the Battle of Tafurk in 1882. He was in the Battle of Susquehanna in 1885. He got a bunch of medals. Royal British Navy. Royal uh -huh. British Navy. Then my grandfather on my mother's side was in the Army. He served in France and mm -hmm. a bunch of other bunch of other places and I don't know a lot about him because that information got lost. Mm -hmm. But those are but his medals. Huh? Those, those are his yeah. medals. Mm -hmm. Then my grandfather on my father's side was also Royal British Navy mm -hmm. and I here again I don't even know his name I'm trying to track that down. Then we come to more recent my father. Mm -hmm. He was in the Royal Navy fleet air arm. He was in the back seat of a torpedo bomber and he served during World War II. They couldn't do their night flying training in England, so they had to come over here to Maine. Mm -hmm. Th that's where he met my mother and took her back. Ah, okay. And then she stayed in England while he went off to the war, and these are all the medals he got. Mm -hmm. Then as soon as the war was over, they came back to the States and he became a citizen. Mm -hmm. You get my mother's brother, Uncle Jack, he survived World War II. Uh, the ship he was on, the Yorktown, got sunk. One of the planes he was in got shot down. He survived all that. And then two years after World War II, he was in a Navy bomber that crashed, and he died. And they didn't actually oh. bring him back home until mm -hmm. 1990 because they couldn't get to, mm -hmm. to his remains. Mm -hmm. So he got a bunch of medals. And then we get to Raymond. The, the, then it comes to me. Uh -huh. I joined up in 1972. In 1969, served from 69 through 72, raised the family for 15 years, got mm -hmm. back into the Army Reserves, and just retired in 2006. I was sent to Ethiopia, I've been to England, I've been to quite a few different places, mm -hmm. about six different countries. And these are your medals here? Those are my, my medals. And then we get to my son, <laughs> who I did not push him. He wanted to join on his own, so right out of high school, he joined up, and he served from 1994 yeah. to 2008. You, and you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Ethiopia, and yes. when you went into the Army Security Agency, yes. your responsibility in, in Ethiopia was to hear what was going on during the Vietnam War. Uh, we had a 8,000-foot-high listening post with a 100-acre antenna farm, mm -hmm. and it wasn't just Vietnam. We could cover half the world. And as the NSA was listening to other stuff, we were listening to military broadcasts. Mm -hmm. And our job was to figure out what foreign militaries were doing and alert the president so he mm -hmm. could say, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or we'll do this. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> well, even thank yes. you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Gene Walker, I guess 1970 seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You yes, were, sir, you were in, the, in the Navy during the Vietnam War. Before that. Before that, I was I joined in 1963 to mm -hmm. uh, 67 mm -hmm. and in Vietnam in 66. Yeah, yeah. So you were in Vietnam for part of your time. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, it, when I was talking to you earlier about sort of just briefing me about your career, um, I said, "Well, what do you want to show me?" And you said, "Well, 
I brought you my jacket because it's got the stuff on it that shows my Navy career. It, it has Look. my history. It has your history. Let's take a look at it. It's like a, it's like a, a scrapbook, isn't it? Yes, sir. Point uh, it out to me. I'm, in fr I'm from Illinois. Mm -hmm. I went to boot camp in San Diego in California. I was a year in Alaska uh, at uh, Buskin Lake Communication Station in uh, uh, Naval Communication mm -hmm. Station, Kodiak, Alaska. Then after I got out of Alaska, I was assigned to the Chevalier for two years of my re remaining service. And uh, we went Westpac cruise in 1966. Mm -hmm. Now, the Chevalier and Westpac cruise, that may not mean much to people that weren't in the service at the time. What was it? Okay, that is, uh, we were deployed uh, mainly as an anchor for the USS Constellations uh, uh, carrier mm -hmm. uh, in Vietnam. And we was also assigned uh, Brown Water, which is, uh, we went up to Saigon River and we went to Da Nang. Uh, uh, and uh, that, uh, had some uh, little gifts uh, given to people that did that. You, you mean gifts that stayed with you the rest of your the life? Rest of what my you're life, like, yes. What would that be? Uh, for me, uh, I was diagnosed in 1975 uh, with diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, adult onset type 2 diabetes mellitus. Mm -hmm. And I've had that since 1975. And now I have to wear an insulin pump. Mm -hmm. And the insulin pump is the only thing I have uh, because I cannot take injections anymore mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of Agent Orange shut down everything in my body. Mm -hmm. uh, that that, uh, uh, that I, uh, if I don't take the insulin from the insulin yeah. pump, I die. You're, you're, you're 70 years old, and yes. you look, except for that, you appear to be in very good health. Well, I have had a long journey. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I am aware that I have to take care of myself. Yeah, yeah. You don't seem to hold a grudge or be angry about your service. No, sir. I, I was very proud to be in Vietnam. Uh, right now, I do a honor guard for Camp Butler uh, a Cemetery, and uh, since uh, October of uh, 2010, I've been to over 600 burials out wow. of Camp Butler. Well, thank you for that. Oh, you're very welcome. I understand we're keeping you from a burial today, so I better well, we let you. I better today. cut you yeah, loose. Okay. Thanks, Gene. Thank you very much. <laughs> Paul Sweet, you had a very interesting military career absolutely because not too many guys can say well they went in to the navy and they went into the army and they went into the air force and you served in all three branches didn't you it's very interesting very interesting i want to show a picture of you when you were a real fresh navy yeah. recruit right here you were just a teenager yes. weren't you was about 19 years old yeah in photo yeah here. we're going to tell a navy story in a minute but first this one up here this is interesting because uh this is you in 1989 89. and people may remember that berlin, and this is in germany germany and so this would have been before the, wall the berlin came, wall, wall came, came down, down right mm -hmm. and you're in training yes over in germany defending the yeah. perimeter per defensive perimeter yeah. yeah so so you saw a little cold war activity yes. and that brings me back to what i was talking about um, when, when you were in the Navy the first time, uh, people thought, well, you know, you were probably involved with Vietnam, but you weren't involved with Vietnam. You were involved in the Cold War, Cold War in Spain, in Spain, right? In Mediterranean, yeah. Mediterranean. What yeah. happened? Well, uh, I got assigned to a submarine squadron. I started out in Norfolk, Virginia, went to Charleston, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was transferred from the 18th submarine squadron to the 16th. And after about two months in, in uh, Charleston, we went road to Spain. And in December of 67, uh, we found that it wasn't one of a, a submarine assigned to our squadron, but the George C. Marshall was rammed by a Russian trawler. Mm -hmm. Now, Russian trawler is, is disguised as a fishing vessel, but it's really a spy ship. And it rammed the oh. George C. Marshall when she surfaced. So they were spying all through the Mediterranean. All through, uh -huh. yeah. And, all and the here's, time a, here's a picture of that. Of that, uh, this is a nuclear sub, right? Nuclear submarine, and it's right here. And this is after it's been damaged by this uh, by this Russian spy ship. And you all, because it was a nuclear sub, you couldn't dry dock it. Right. So y'all had to build a coffer dam. Uh, that's what that is, a coffer, coffer dam. dam. And that's your that's your unit. Those yes. are your guys, huh? What, what kind of job was that? It, it was a. a very hectic job because in building the coffer dam we had to make sure that it fit and was sealed around the hull mm -hmm. and the the, the interior uh, framework or the interior hull wasn't damaged but all of the framework and the exterior hull was so we had to remove all of the damage and 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 
first we had to construct the coffer dam to right. fit around yeah. it and then remove all the damage and do all total reconstruction mm -hmm. of the, the hull, repaint everything and, and yeah. put out all of the, uh, anything that was mechanical back into the, the hull yeah. of the submarine. Wow, fascinating. And it was around the clock to mm -hmm. get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they can't sit, submarines couldn't sit for, yeah. so yeah. we had to get her done and get yeah. her back in operation, yeah. back in. It pretty much describes military service, get her done, right? Get her, yes, get okay. it done. And hey, Paul, thank you for getting all these veterans, for your help in getting them together and helping us tell their story. We certainly appreciate it. You're most welcome, okay. you're most welcome. Thank you. After five years of very hard work and fundraising, this will be the site for flag ceremonies and veteran ceremonies in New Berlin for years to come. And if you're near New Berlin on the east side of town, it's worth a visit. With another Illinois story in New Berlin, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.